Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris and this reading is for the general collective of Cancer. It won't be for everyone watching, so if it resonates, please comment below. And if not, please check your moon, rising, and Venus signs for other messages you need to hear. And remember, time, energy, and gender are fluid. Feel free to reverse roles however they apply to you. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel, and tap the notification bell so you don't miss future readings. So guys, welcome, welcome, and happy birthday, Cancer. It is your season, your time to shine. So thank you so much to all of my new and returning subscribers. The love and support that you show this channel is amazing. So thank you so much. For those of you who are new, please check the description box below for all of the details that you will need. Jeez, I just looked up at the clock and it was 11.11. 11. Um, please check the details in the description box for my social media links, my website, and also my website information for my new channel, Woo Works LL. LC, where I will be doing things like guided meditations um, starting this fall. So if you guys like that sort of thing, please click over and subscribe and share with someone else who likes the same things. So this is going to be your cancer season um, reading, and this is going to be a classic old how do they feel about you spread, seeing as cancer is ruled by the moon, which governs our feels. So this is going to be about your person, whoever that may be. If you are thinking to yourself, well, Chris, I don't have a person. Well, this could be about someone from your past. It could also be about someone coming in. So if it doesn't make sense right now, it might make sense in the future. So again, this could be about you, about your person, and also for the cross watcher. So keep in mind, like I said, time, energy, gender are fluid. Um, and let's just see what comes out. So first, I'm going to be using a brand new deck called the Moon Oracle, um, which is actually a really interesting deck. I was reading through it uh, the last few days and I absolutely love it. I connected with it immediately. So I'm excited to share with you guys um, and I will be reading uh, excerpts from the book. So let's get some general energy using that deck for the sign of cancer, please. Also, this deck is kind of new, so it might stick a little bit, which just basically means more cards for you, right? So <laughs> let's see what comes out for the sign of cancer, please and the general energy of their person slash connection. So we've got three. So first of all, let's talk about Athene, okay? Um, this is going to be the energy of a goddess, okay? So um, Athene is the white goddess and rules Gemini or the air element. And the key phrase here is too many irons in the fire, okay? So this goddess reveals that the questioner possesses a wealth of inherited talents and gifts. These can be used for the good of others or for self-advancement. Athene suggests that solely looking after your own interests may not be the way to achieve the results you want. It may be that if you use your abilities in the service of others, you will gain your desires in a more positive and fulfilling way. The last of the young white goddesses sees each problem as a chance for creative thought. The nature of air in Gemini is a versatile and broad-minded energy. There is a danger of being too diverse in attitude for the current situation. If this goddess card is selected, June may be a significant month with regard to the question. So um, we literally are in the month of June and I just feel like um, a lot is going to be happening for you, Cancer, okay? So as it says here too... Um, this is suggesting that basically only looking after your own interests isn't really the way to achieve what you want, right? So Athene is more of a selfless energy, which is basically you, Cancer. You are a nurturer. You are kind. You are caring. Um, and you are very deep in nature, okay? And a lot of people call you a crybaby and, you know, yeah, it's funny and stuff. But, um, <laughs> I mean, it's really not because Cancer has the ability to tap deep into those emotions that other people aren't capable of doing again, since cancer is ruled by the moon, okay? And the only zodiac sign that is ruled by the moon. We also have Ishtar and we have sword, okay? So let's dig into that as well. Um, Ishtar is another white goddess, sign of Pisces, water element. And the key phrase here is be malleable. So 
The card meaning says that this white goddess indicates you must be firm and take strong, positive action to achieve your aims. If you have selected this card, you will need to fight for something you wish to regain. It may be necessary to symbolically strip down to the barest essentials, give up everything else in order to fight this particular battle, and even then you may need to call for assistance at the end. The element of Pisces is water, and it is the ability of water to flow around or wear down any obstruction that is at the heart of the meaning of this card. If this card is selected, March may also be a significant month in regards to any questions you might be asking Cancer. So um, basically what I'm getting here is... Um, your nature, right, is to be fair, is to nurture others, right? Not to put yourselves first. And, and that's kind of a little bit of a downfall of the sign of cancer as well. It's like a lot of times being in that queen of cups energy can sometimes get us into trouble, right? We end up caring more for others than we actually care about our own selves. Except right now, the general energy here um, is simply saying that you're going to need to start fighting for you, right? You're going to need to start fighting for yourself. And again, this could be general energy for you. Um, a specific message for you and or it could be the energy of your person like I said so with the sword we've got the number 17 which might be significant for some of you um, but the sword basically represents um, the overwhelming need to take action for a cause or a crusade okay so this is a card that demands justice uh, the powerful Pluto influence indicates revenge for past wrongs, um, and this is the energy of Libra and Scorpio ruled by Mercury and Pluto. So um, maybe there is going to be some communication or there will be some communication that's necessary in order to um, maybe cut someone or something off. But it says here, if the card is drawn, you perceive something to be unjust and need to take action to set things right. Um the serpent's tongue depicted on the card represents agitated discussion. So there are bound to be heated arguments with regard to the matter concerned. And I just, my face and my neck just got totally flushed. So again, with this kind of warrior energy of Ishtar popping up with the sword um, and this mercury energy, we also are still in mercury retrograde. We've got a lot of retrogrades happening. Um, I think Jupiter is also about to go retrograde and um, things are about to be popping off in cancer season, right? Now that we're moving through this eclipse tunnel and and we're in full retrograde season and summer is here, there's going to be a lot of tension rising, okay? So perhaps the general energy here is simply saying like, it's time to take up arms to defend yourself. Um, it's time to have those uncomfortable discussions and, and conversations perhaps that might end up being very uncomfortable, okay? And so let's dig into the tarot and see what is going on. And let's think about what your person is thinking about. Um, let's also get some energy on how they are feeling. So we've got the Four of Cups coming up in their conscious thoughts. We have the Princess of Cups popping up in their feelings. Let's see how this person is viewing you, Cancer. We've got the King of Pentacles. Interesting. So what does this person really want? We've got the Empress. How are they planning to take action moving forward? We have the Ace of Cups. Wow. And finally, what is it that they want you to know? Oh my gosh, embarrassing. Oh, I forgot to take out the, um, the little card that comes with the deck. <laughs> Okay, so what they want you to know is the Nine of Wands. Bottom of the deck, we've got the Four of Pentacles. So in the recent past, I feel strongly as if there's something about um, perhaps you or maybe uh, something in this person's life that they're willing to unwilling to let go of, right? This is, um, as you can see, we've got this very uh, prominent, strong-looking man. And this woman is kind of looking down, okay? I almost feel this energy of, of control here. And that is exactly what the Four of Pentacles is. It's like grasping for control. So Cancer, if this person in your environment in the recent past has kind of maybe made you feel like either they can't let go of something, 
perhaps that happened between the two of you. Um, this could also be this person like unwilling to let you go, but this could also be the energy of someone who is, um, miserly or selfish or greedy, someone who takes and doesn't give someone focused solely on themselves. Um, this could also be someone working diligently to, to gain financial, um, freedom and stability. Um, so whichever storyline it is for you, cancer, this is the energy that basically gets you set up for a lack mentality. And we talk about that a lot, right? You set yourself up for the next card, of the five of pentacles by clinging to the material world. Okay. When you cling too hard to something, it is going to, um, it's going to escape your grasp, right? But when we forget about it or we just allow things to flow naturally, that's when the things that you want are actually attracted to you. So if you feel as if this person maybe has been controlling in the past, um, it could simply be because of that fact. Maybe they have felt the need to gain footing in the physical world. And instead of things going the way they thought they were going to go, they ended up having to work a lot harder to hold on to the things around them. Okay. So in their thoughts, we've got the four of cups. So this is the energy of a missed opportunity, right? They're thinking about this, this past that the two of you share. Okay. They're looking back on the things that, that didn't work for them, that didn't work for you even perhaps, or in general, it's just not working. This is about disappointments, focusing too hard on what didn't happen and not seeing the opportunity ahead. Okay. So perhaps this could also be them awakening to the fact that they missed an opportunity with you in the past. And I love how this is represented by the cups. Okay. Um, we know the fourth cup in this card is the divine offering this opportunity of, of love, of, of an, another chance. And so I think that the lesson right now or the thing that this person is mulling over in their mind is how maybe they've let you slip through their fingers before, okay, by perhaps focusing on the wrong things, all right? Um, with the princess of cups coming up in their feelings, uh, we've got more water energy, one after the other. We know the princess of cups is also the page. Um, this could be a message of love that they're wanting to send. This could also be an apology for their past behavior. But the Princess of Cups also represents um, an innocence, an innocent quality or a childlike quality. So this could also be about a child for some of you. Um, but overall, what I see that they're feeling is perhaps the need to to be honest about their feelings, okay? Right now, though, in this stage of the page or princess, I don't really feel as if they are mature enough to come forward with the correct type of approach. They might still be um, thinking about how they're going to do so. And perhaps maybe the past has kind of set you up for this strange dynamic of where now they're thinking about all these things and they're wanting to perhaps apologize. But the question is, will they? Okay. Um, Paige is that energy of messenger, but I also see it as a very immature energy, a childlike energy, um, and perhaps even someone with unrealistic expectations. Okay. So with the King of Pentacles coming up and how they see you, they see you. Okay. They see you as someone who has their footing in the physical world. They see you as someone stable, smart, okay, savvy, they see you as a good parental figure, someone who has their shit together, okay? Um, King of Pentacles, Earth Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. So you could have that in your chart in very prominent placements. Or again, you know, obviously we know too that the King and Queen of Pentacles represent mother and father energy, okay? Which is also that nurturing and kind energy that we spoke about earlier, okay? I do apologize for what sounds like a, a drag race going on in the background. <clears throat> um, I'm in New York <laughs> again. So, um, basically I am working out of the kitchen and it's like insanely hot in here. Um, so I have really no option, but to keep the back door open anyways, with the Empress card coming up as what they really want, this could be what they want for themselves. Okay. Um, 
they could be really wanting to take on this energy of a nurturer, of the empress. Okay, we know this as divine feminine energy, but mainly what I see here is, is cancer that they're wanting they're wanting their counterpart. They're wanting the energy of a mother. They're wanting someone who is um, capable of, of understanding and dealing with situations in a mature way. They want to connect with their divine feminine counterpart. So we know that the Empress is the queen of all queens because she's mastered the lessons of all the elements, Okay, which is why she's placed higher than any of the other queens in the tarot. Okay, a major arcana energy more so than just a king or queenly energy, right? So I think really what this person wants is, and maybe they're not able to admit this just yet, but I kind of feel as if this person is starting to see the traps of the physical world and, and what they've gotten themselves into by perhaps neglecting this connection between the two of you, Cancer. Now they're wanting to basically um, reunite or come together with someone who they feel is like their queen, their goddess, someone who is their divine counterpart, someone who understands them, loves them unconditionally. Um, and I see this as, as like union. Okay. So we already know this person is feeling the need to apologize or be honest about their emotions. They're seeing you step up in the world, cancer. They're seeing you taking care of business, taking care of the family and getting it all done effortlessly. Right. Um, and what they want now is, I just heard they want to worship you. So look at this, okay? And I just want to make a comment on this really fast because I recently had a dream, okay? And I'm actually, I'm not wearing my ring in the video, but I recently had a dream um, where my counterpart came to me and we had a discussion and I asked him to guess which stone was in my hand. And he guessed a garnet and it happened to be a garnet. And, um, I love how this bird, okay. We know birds are messengers. The bird is carrying the garnet. The garnet symbolizes, um, an anniversary of sorts, right? It symbolizes, um, the heart, uh, love. And I feel as if this person is truly wanting perhaps to present this offer of love to you. But I mean, obviously you can see the Empress is shining, right? You And I keep picking up this card because I keep noticing more things. The Empress has no need for any additional jewels or adornments. She's already got everything around her neck. She's got bubbles. She's got chains. She's got all kinds of stuff, right? She's blinging. She doesn't need this, this stone, right? But it's symbolic, okay? It's symbolic. And as a matter of fact, I don't even know if this is a stone, it looked like a stone at first, but it could also be a fruit, okay? It could be a pomegranate since that is typically, um, in the traditional tarot, the empress's dress is covered in pomegranates, right? Um, which to me symbolizes an offer, right? So speaking of an offer, this person and how they are planning to move forward, their intended actions is the Ace of Cups. We just talked about that energy here with the Four of Cups and the Princess of Cups. We know that the Ace represents true love, a new beginning, the birth of something new, perhaps even the actual birth of a child for some of you, okay? This person intends to offer up their cup. See, the thing is, is you can't offer your cup if it's not full, right? You can't come and say, here, hey, I'm here with my cup. There's nothing in it, but I'm here, you know, and, and I'm, I'm A for effort, right? No, you don't show up and try to be a part of a relationship, okay? And I say relationship because this doesn't have to always be romantic. You don't show up with an empty cup and expect others to fill that cup for you, right? Um, we talk about the two of cups, which is divine union, the energy of two counterparts coming together with full overflowing cups without needing or wanting or um, expecting anything from the other, right? Just sharing mutual respect, feelings, energy. And that's what this person wants to bring to the table. I think that perhaps, Cancer, if you've been in separation with this person or you're kind of waiting for them to come around, I think this person had to go through the trials and tribulations of the physical world in order to truly understand what the love that they felt for you actually meant, okay? And perhaps not even just the love they felt for you, but love in general, um, perhaps they're starting to see that that's actually what's important and 
And maybe right now they might be in a little bit of a deliberation phase, focusing really hard on the past. But as you can see, it's not like this person um, looks very confident, right? They're looking down. He's like scratching his head. Um, and perhaps there could be a little bit of mental confusion for this person. But overall, what they're wanting to do is offer their love. Okay. They want to be in that energy. They want to experience that energy. Um, so the, the cup that's overflowing is just very symbolic right now. So this person wants you to know that they are in the energy of nine of wands. Okay. They are quite literally the wounded warrior. So looking back at this general energy here, it seems like perhaps what this person was trying to do was Again, live for others, right? Live for others, and I say others as in like people, but it could be just like in general, living for others, working hard for others, and trying to gain things in the physical world. Now they're starting to realize what they have to do is think of themselves and put themselves first and do what's necessary, have difficult conversations and perhaps conflict in order to come out on the other side. And that is what the wounded warrior is up to, okay? Wounded warrior doesn't stop right before the journey's over. Over, they keep pushing on even though they're they're tattered and torn okay these wands are are equipped with thorns right and we've got this lion in the back kind of egging him on like you can do it you got this keep pushing keep going um so as you can see too like no matter how difficult it might be to hold these wands and to feel those thorns as you're gripping whatever situation it might be that this person is in. But I do also feel like it's it's not going to end up affecting them. And I think that's what they want you to know. They're working really hard and persevering in their pursuits and their passion and in the direction in which they feel like they're being called via the soul. And I kind of feel like this is that, that symbolism there, right? We've got, um, gosh, there's so many like little like hidden things here in these, in these cards. We've got the snake around one of the wands. So again, perhaps with the snakes here too, and this whole like battle theme, there could be snakes in your person's environment. Um, this could be like a karmic partner, a family member, someone who is just making things difficult for them or someone who is, is basically, um, not trustworthy that this person needs to deal with or cut off. And they want you to know that they're doing that. Okay. They're in the process. So let's clarify with the psychic tarot. Um, and just clarify in general, see what comes out. Any additional information we need to know about this person. All right. So what else do we need to know about this person's situation or the sign of cancer? Okay, so we've got moving on, which is the Six of Swords. Okay, interesting. Consistent messages coming out. We've got the Four of Cups again. And we've got the Two of Swords. Okay, so let's dig into this. So we already know that this person is is deliberating, right? They're They're not happy. They're not satisfied in their current situation. As you can see, he's over here, but the castle and all the other cool stuff is behind them, right? It's almost like, wow, I'm over here now, but what I should have been doing was heading over here to this castle, and they know it, right? And he's looking down. He's not He's not happy. He's not content. We've also got the six of swords, okay? Moving on. We were just talking about, sorry, it's not focusing. We were just talking about the energy of snakes, okay? And we know that the six of swords is moving away from conflict, Okay, it's moving away from manipulation, from petty arguments, disagreements. Five of Swords is the energy of, of that, right? And moving on is simply saying this person is done with that sort of behavior in their life, whether they're the ones inflicting it or dealing with it. They're moving on from that energy and they're looking towards emotional healing, okay? Um, with the Two of Swords, though, like I said, I think this is more of a mental thing for them, right? They're, they're sitting there scratching their head. They might be really confused like how did I get here and they're now being faced with their past like oh yeah that's right I made these decisions I'm the one that got here because I put myself here but the problem with it is like 
they're afraid to make a decision basically. Okay. Uh, we know the swords are about communication. Um, but the two of swords is the two swords across the chest, right? It's like, it's like I plead the fifth. They don't want to have to make any difficult decisions, but the problem is, is that they know they're going to have to. Okay. So I love how we have this guy and then we've got the inside and it's almost like, it's almost like they're keeping their true thoughts and their true um, agenda, perhaps, a secret. And maybe this could all be uh, kind of a little bit of a facade in a sense, right? Maybe this is what they want people to think, that they're not really going to make any decisions or that they're they're unbiased or whatever it might be. But again, it might just be a ploy in order for them to truly get out of the situation that they're in, right? And that might not be for everyone. I know that was kind of specific. So, Let's go ahead and get some energy from the Queen of the Moon Oracle and see what is blocking this individual. So I love how the card flipped out so crazily on top of the Princess of Cups and in reverse. We've got the nourishment energy. So I really feel as if that's exactly what's not happening for this person, right? They're not experiencing this Feeling. They're not experiencing growth and joy and things that truly um, fulfill them and keep them happy, right? I kind of see this energy as like a, a ten of cups energy. But coming up in reverse, I feel like what's happening for this person is, like I said, they're putting all of their energy in the wrong places. And what's happening is the water and the energy, the blood, sweat, and tears that they're putting into whatever work this is, it's almost like it's going down the drain, more of that four of cups energy. They know that they messed up in the past and they're starting to realize um, that they need to be accountable for their actions and the way things have played out in their own life and their situation. Um, and that's the blockage. They're realizing now that they're not getting what they wanted. They're not fulfilled. They're not happy. And, and they need to make changes. Okay, so let's get some energy from the Moonology deck and see what is the, uh, what's the advice moving forward. Oh, let's try that one more time. What is the advice moving forward for Cancer? Okay. Okay, so we've got you're very close to achieving your goal and this is a gibbous moon, okay? So whether it's waning or waxing, I kind of feel like it's waxing considering as it's saying you're very close and we know that um, full moon energy is is kind of like that release energy after manifesting for, for a two-week cycle. Um, overall, I feel as if this is Spirit's way of reminding you that if this is something you've been waiting on, if you've been waiting on communication from this person, this is a reminder to you that it's going to happen and you're getting really close. And I think also this is spirit saying that your person perhaps is getting very close. And that could be to these realizations. They could be very getting very close to their breaking point where they realize they need to make those changes. They need to have those uncomfortable conversations if things are going to move forward and be better, right? Um, so let's get one last card and see what is the energy from the, from the true love reading cards by Belinda Grace and we've got emotional freedom. So uh, let's pull from the book on this one. That was weird. Like a random piece of glitter just floated down onto me. I wonder, wonder where that was from. Um, what was I doing? Emotional freedom. So sorry. All right. So the emotional freedom, true emotional freedom is liberating and its ability to embrace individuality in yourself and others. So in our modern society, we often encounter the notion that being single means you are free while being in a relationship means you are not. Nothing could be further from the truth. Many single people feel trapped by loneliness and an inability to embrace certain aspects of life without a partner. Indeed, we often find that two people together may accomplish and enjoy much more of what the world has to offer than what was possible on their own. You've drawn this card today because deep down you still believe or fear that being in a loving relationship will compromise your personal autonomy and emotional freedom, okay? So pause. 
that could also be this person's issue. And maybe they feel that way because of past scenarios, right? So no matter how much you desire love and commitment on the one hand, there's a part of you that holds back because of this old feeling, right? And so they say old feeling. So again, maybe there's something that's going on in this person's past and you could have something to do with that cancer, but maybe not. Um, and, and that could also be what this mental conflict is about. It's like deep down they know already what they want, right? They want this true love. They want to make this offer. They want to make things right. But on the other hand, it's kind of scary for them because they feel almost as if they were to make this offer that they would somehow be losing a part of themselves, right? And we all know that, you know, relationships like that where you feel like you're losing parts of yourself um, are not healthy. Okay, so alternatively, if you are already in a relationship, it's time to acknowledge that your partner is not really limiting or suppressing you. No one can truly control you. So this card is suggesting that it's time to reclaim your power, make healthier choices for yourself, and act upon them. True emotional freedom is not about keeping secrets from your mate. You may succeed in deceiving your partner, but you cannot deceive yourself in the long run. Rather, emotional freedom is about acknowledging the differing attitudes and perspectives each person holds and creating a relationship that can embrace them all. Then each of you will feel free to think, speak, and act authentically while sharing the uniqueness of your experience with each other. This generates a feeling of mutual support, care, and understanding and leads to an amazing freedom that celebrates the truth of who you are. So, Cancer, for some of you, this person, again, could be having these realizations and understanding that they might need to apologize to you or set the record straight, okay? Um, perhaps this person ran in the past or, again, ignored the connection in the past because they felt this, right? They felt as if they would be losing some part of themselves based on past situations, okay? Now, Hopefully this reading resonated for someone, um, anyone out there. Again, if it did, please comment below. Um, I hope that you guys are having a happy and healthy summer so far. And again, happy birthday, Cancer. I love you guys so much, and I will see you soon. Bye.